Uh, some of the other stuff that's happened over the weekend. Donald Trump gave a speech on so-called Western values in Poland. Uh, that was uh, th Thursday, as I recall. Maybe Friday. Um, and the speech seemed to me like something right out of uh, triumph of the will. In fact, he used the word will several times. Um, uh, Nate and I over at the TV studio, I think I mentioned this on Friday on the air, Nate and I over the TV studio sat, sat and watched like, you know, I watched about 30, 40 minutes of Lenny Reifenstahl's movie Triumph of the Will looking for a, uh, you know, a, a little piece that was similar enough to Trump's speech that I could juxtapose them. I didn't find one. Uh, what I found were grand themes that were essentially the same thing. And uh, it's an amazing movie. You can watch it on YouTube. There's a bunch of different versions. It's out of copyright. Um, but it was this movie, the, the, the preeminent propaganda film that, that uh, filmmaker Lenny Reifenstahl made in 1934. And it uh, was required to be played in all German theaters before the, the main event, before the main feature, um, from 1934 all the way till the fall of the Nazi uh, regime. And... Um, but in, in any case, the, Trump gave his so-called Western values speech in Poland. It was something that the right-wingers in Poland loved. I, I think it was something the right-wingers all over the, at least all over the white Western world loved. Because essentially that's what he was talking about, is white Western values. And uh, which is why he gave that speech in Poland and not at the G20. At the G20, you've got representatives of China and other countries as well, Japan. But um, this is... This is bizarre. He gives a speech about the importance of preserving Western values, and the West is always going to be together. And then he goes to, to Europe to meet with Western leaders and trashes them and steps all over them and ignores them and, and puts his daughter in a meeting instead of himself, et cetera, et cetera. Um, he really is hurting the status of the United States, in my opinion. I mean, this this is... My 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 two biggest beefs with the Trump administration are number one, that he completely lied in his campaign, and he is doing exactly what any generic Republican would do, um, instead of the things he said he was going to do. Number one, you know, he said he was going to protect Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Instead, he's trying to attack them. He said that he was going to uh, he was in favor of raising wages. In fact, he even proposed a ten dollar minimum wage in one campaign stop. Now he's supporting rolling back minimum wages. It's happened in four Republican states now. Missouri was the most recent last week. He, he said that he, um, he supports uh, blowing up these trade deals that are sending our jobs overseas and bringing the jobs back home. He said that, you know, when he ran for office, but now he wants to negotiate a trade deal, um, you know, with, well, pretty much everybody. He's, he's talking about it now. He wants to renegotiate NAFTA, right? I'm... <laughs> Um, he said that he didn't want any more foreign entanglements, that Iraq was the stupidest war ever. And what's he doing? He's, he's putting uh, McMaster and, and buddies in charge and, and Mattis in charge of Iraq and just and Afghanistan. And, eh, just do whatever you want. Oh, yeah, well, 5,000 more troops, no problem. An American soldier died in Afghanistan last week. It, it, it like, gets no coverage. I mean, maybe it would if we had a, if we had a, uh, uh, a draft. Louise and I went to see a movie over the weekend. It was uh, Baby Driver. <laughs> it was just like, you know, where's a good, dumb, fun movie that's got a 97% rating on Rotten Tomatoes? Well, that was it. So we went. And it was actually a good, dumb, fun movie. I mean, it was a variation on Bonnie and Clyde, right? It was just, it was the Bonnie and Clyde narrative, only it had a twist at the end. And I'm not going to tell you what it was. I'm not going to ruin the movie for you. Um, but I but I liked it. I, I liked the movie. I liked the twist. And... Um, but the, uh, before the movie, you know, they run these previews and before the previews, they run the ads and, and uh, you know, with a little TV promo and all that kind of stuff. And there was an ad for the Army. And it said that if you join the Army now, you could qualify for a $40,000 sign-up bonus. Now, to a poor person in middle America, or for that matter, to a poor person anywhere in the United States, $40,000 is a hell of a lot of money. And it just made me so sad as I was watching this, knowing that an American soldier had just died in Afghanistan the day before, or two days earlier. 
And, and remembering uh, Jefferson's correspondence with Madison in 1787, late 87, it would have been November, December of 87, or into the spring, winter and spring of 1788, after Madison sent him the first draft of the Constitution. And Jefferson was so outspoken that he did not want there to be a standing army during times of peace, which was the whole reason why the Second Amendment, you know, uh, at least originally, you know, Madison decided to put the Second Amendment in to shut up Jefferson. And while well, the main thing that they did to shut up Jefferson was in Article One, Section 8, they made it unconstitutional for the federal government to fund the army for more than two years. Look it up. The most, the longest period of time that the, the Congress can fund the United States Army, they can, fund, they can fund the Navy forever. But the army, the longest they can fund it is two years because they didn't want to stand in the army. And I remember him writing, you know, we should rejoice. We should rejoice that there is none among us of our young men who are willing to sign up to be shot at for a sixpence. In other words, our young men go off to the military because they want to protect their country, not for the money. Boy, how times There's an Australian journalist who uh, apparently is uh, Chris Ullman is his name. Okay. And he's apparently quite the right winger in Australia. Um, and, you know, a, a fan of some bizarre conspiracy theories and whatnot. But, but uh, nonetheless, he, he made this, he did this report on Trump that has just gone completely viral. Here it is. The President of the United States has a particular skill set that he's identified an illness in Western democracies, but he has no cure for it and seems intent on exploiting it. And we've also learned that he has no desire and no capacity to lead the world. He was an uneasy, lonely, awkward figure at this gathering, and you got the strong sense that some of the leaders are trying to find the best way to work around him. Donald Trump's a man who craves power because it burnishes his celebrity. To be constantly talking and talked about is all that really matters, and there is no value placed on the meaning of words, so what's said one day can be discarded the next. So what did we learn? We learned that Donald Trump has pressed fast forward on the decline of the United States as a global leader. He managed to isolate his nation, to confuse and alienate his allies, and to diminish America. Some will cheer the decline of America, but I think we'll miss it when it's gone. And that's the biggest threat to the values of the West, which he claims to hold so dear. There you go. That was from The Guardian.